Hello everyone and welcome to the Oklahoma News Report. I'm Rich Lenz. Is it safe to reopen our schools? It is the most intense debate involving the COVID-19 pandemic in Oklahoma right now. And with a new school year just weeks away, there is no statewide consensus among parents, students, teachers, and administrators on what to do. The state's largest district, Oklahoma City, announcing this week that classes will begin on August 29th and the first nine weeks will be online at home learning only. Tulsa Public Schools will vote next week. Their superintendent is recommending the first nine weeks be virtual, but unlike last spring, the students will be tested. On Thursday afternoon, Governor Stitt announcing a statewide plan to provide personal protection equipment to schools. His administration is allocating $10 million in CARES Act funding to buy PPE for every school district. Every teacher and student will be given two reusable masks apiece in addition to face shields, disposable gloves and gowns in their classrooms. I encourage our schools to take all the precautions necessary like distance learning for children uh, who are having underlying conditions uh, that may put them at higher risk for COVID-19, uh, but keeping schools closed for all students has many harmful consequences. Also this week, the Oklahoma Education Association said many of its teachers fear returning to school until the current surge of COVID-19 is under control and safe. But there are also those who believe it is not safe or healthy to keep children home and out of school. Let's begin with a refresher course. Just six months ago, this is what a typical Oklahoma high school looked like when the bell rang and students got out of class. And a typical elementary school looked like this. Healthcare experts and education leaders agree. Until the vaccine for COVID-19 exists, scenes like this are as old fashioned as a pocket calculator. A successful open is one where we have the confidence of families that their children are going to have um, many layers of safety measures in place, as well as uh, one where teachers have the confidence that there's a minimal level of uh, safeguards to help lower the spread of the COVID virus. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared and anxious. I am. Katie Thompson is set to begin her eighth year of teaching kindergarten at the Shawnee Early Childhood Center. I teach with an incredible team who they, they have underlying conditions, many of them. And so my mind goes to some dark places thinking about my friends and thinking about my family and possibly exposing them to something that they did not sign up for. So it's, it's very scary. And that's why Hoffmeister, who also chairs the OETA board, is expressing great disappointment that the State Board of Education voted four to three to only recommend the wearing of masks and other pandemic protocols in public schools and not require that it be state policy. If the community is not all wearing a mask in uh, areas where we have active spread, uh, then it is just going to minimize the opportunity for children to get started in person. Our first priority to make it safe and um, to make it a t place where people have the confidence we've lowered the risk. Those legitimate health risks must be weighed in conjunction with the physical and mental risks of keeping schools shuttered. The American Academy of Pediatrics is urging a return to school for two primary reasons. The first is the safety of at-risk children living in troubled homes. The eyes and ears of law enforcement, as far as children are concerned, are teachers, school staff, church members, daycare staff. And with children having been sequestered, if you will, since March till now, Many reports are saying that child abuse cases reports are down 50%. That does not mean the child abuse is down 50%. Indrani Garadia, a renowned advocate for women's health and empowerment, is a victim of child abuse herself. The federal government is considering billions of dollars in funding for schools. Should some of that money be dedicated to hiring more counselors? Yes. We have to put money into counseling within the schools to find out what happened and to see if we, there can be some triage now. And in fact, that happened on Wednesday when a bill sponsored by Oklahoma Congresswoman Kendra Horn, the Children's Mental Health Care Access Act, 
passed on a bipartisan vote. It provides mental health support for children using CARES Act funding. And we also have to help teachers understand that children who have been abused consistently for the last four, five, six months will show up with new behavior problems. And we cannot then say, oh, the child is bad or why don't you behave yourself? You don't know what that child has been suffering. The second reason to resume in-class learning, it's simply more effective than distance learning and absolutely essential for our youngest students. It's critically important. My kids need uh, proximity. They need hands-on experiences. They need those social interactions with their peers. The best way to develop relationships and meaningful connections is in person in the classroom. And that is true for middle and high school students as well. Some teachers are not prepared to do technology and they're much better in person. And I think that in person is better in any situation. That opinion is echoed by students throughout the country. In a survey conducted this week of 8,000 students and parents, almost 70% of the students say they are learning less since remote instruction was implemented. However, 63% of them oppose a return to in-person classes. And only 27% of parents say they're sure they'll return their kids to school this fall. 52% are uncertain, with many opting for homeschooling and online learning services like Epic Charter Schools. And I thank God that I have them in Epic and they are homeschooled, but uh, overall it's, it's been very trying and it's hard. Dion Miller is taking advantage of Sunbeam Family Services annual Grandparents Raising Grandkids Backpack Program in Oklahoma City. The question is, where will they be used and who ultimately decides? School administrators, parents, students, the prevalence of the virus itself? The correct answer is E, all of the above. What is right and safe for one group of people is not, it doesn't feel safe for another group of people. What I love that Shawnee is doing is we're giving parents lots of options. So we do have the virtual option like most schools are doing. We also have the traditional option or you can do a hybrid. We do think that districts are needing to communicate directly to parents and directly to their staff related to safety measures. Most importantly though, I think we have to recognize that all families are going to have a variety of responses. It's going to look different for every family. Uh, that's unique to this back to school time. Our parents need to know that our schools have been working all summer long, um, really since the last day of school to begin preparing for their start date.